Good morning, it's Carrie with Second Spring Naturals. So today's video will be strictly some information on Etsy and the five ways that I actually bring money into my business. So no studio vlogs or anything today, we'll pick up with that again next week. But for today, I wanted to share five different income streams that I have to bring money into my business. So number one is consignment. I know a lot of sellers, especially handmade sellers, steer away from consignment and I can understand why. It can be a nightmare in terms of keeping track of inventory and um, having a loss of products if they don't sell, if they expire, if they're things like skincare that I make. Um, there are a lot of logistical issues with consignment. However, it's one of the first things that I did when I was starting out almost five years ago. I opened my Etsy shop. I hadn't really gotten that started yet, but I did go right away into a local store and began to sell on consignment. So what I found was that five years, almost five years later, that same store is producing a lot of my income for me each month. Based on that and analyzing all of the income over the years, what I did was gradually build more consignment stores. I wanted them to be local enough that I could get to them to restock and I didn't have to ship and I could keep up with um, just all of the, the issues that come with having your products in a shop. And I also wanted to make sure they were far enough away from one another so that my items weren't being sold, you know, two in the same town or even the, the town next door. So what I did was I was able to build out my consignment and I now have, six or seven stores on consignment and they have all worked very well for me. One or two, um, one store closed along the way, but anytime one kind of drops off the radar, then I'll pick up another one. And those consignment orders are very consistent. Every month I get a check and it's not wholesale prices, it's consignment. So I'll do anywhere from 30 to 40% depending. Um, on the fees that they take. So it's less than the price of wholesale and I know every single month that I'm getting a check. Um, these are stores that I know work for me. So that's what's important to do is to make sure the you kind of test out the store and give it a good couple of months to make sure money will come in. Um, I would also suggest making sure the owners have a good inventory system in place so that you're not losing inventory. Make sure you have an agreement to make sure you understand who's responsible for the loss of product. If someone steals it, if there's theft, um, if something breaks, is the owner of the store going to pay you for that or are you responsible for that as a loss? So you want to look at all of those different things, but consignment can be very lucrative and I don't have any plans to um, eliminate that from my income streams. I've come up with my own inventory management system and it can work for you too. I'm happy to talk to you more about how I do it exactly. You can see the link to an Etsy link where I can um, chat with you one-on-one -on -one about that. Number two is wholesale. So this is what most sellers are striving to do is to get wholesale orders. And the reason for that is though you're going to pay um, or though you're going to sacrifice 50% of the revenue that is coming in, you are still going to have consistent orders and you know they're going to come in for a certain amount of money. So it's more about volume than it is anything else. Um, it's also about having the time to to um, focus on other things. When you're doing a large wholesale order, you're packing up that order, uh, producing that order and packing it up all at once and then getting it out the door. Whereas individual orders, you're going to have to ship each one of those. Um, so it really can save you on shipping, it can save you on time, and it helps you with consistency. So I'm slowly building my wholesale brand as well. Number three is craft shows and local events. So each year now, I am making sure I get out into the community to build my local customer base. So I have um, kind of narrowed down the shows I know work really well for me. And those are the shows that I go to. I'm making sure I'm getting email addresses along the way so that those customers will then become repeat customers every month when I send out my email with some sale information and updates. So craft shows are a great way to get out there and really um, just get involved and interact with your local customer base. It's important to do that. You'll also find that every time you go to a show, some kind of a connection is established. I've gotten new stores, whether it's wholesale or consignment from those shows. I actually found um, my photographer at one and I 
also have a sales rep, which I'm kind of linking into um, the wholesale category, also found me at one of my shows. So many things can come out of it, even if it's not the, great, the greatest sales day, you just try it and then you evaluate it and move on. Keep it on your list or find another. The second part of that is local events. So I also do um, some collaborations with other women in small business. My friend Holly owns a spa where she does massage and there's also Reiki and other services offered. So once a month, um, I have actually put my, my products in there. So it's more of a consignment basis, but it's kind of a special arrangement because I can also host events there and things like things like that. But once a month we come together and we do wine Wednesdays or we'll do a third Thursday and uh, they'll do samplings of the massage and the Reiki and other services. And then I'm able to interact with customers um, on a more personal level where there isn't kind of a big push to sell. And I'm also selling my soap. So that has been um, a nice thing for me to do over the last year or so. This year in 2019, I am also adding another local event with another friend who um, is a small business owner and she happens to have a house where she keeps her office and does her services and things like that. Um, it's, a, it's in a beautiful location, so once a month I can kind of do a pop-up shop and event there in collaboration with the services that she offers. So once again, those two things have been, have been great and they help to kind of fill the gap when I don't have a busy show season as well. Um, number four is my website. So my website's really important to me and I think if you're a handmade seller that you should have your own website, not rely on other platforms as the sole revenue generator for your business because that can really be dangerous in terms of trying to grow your business and your brand. So my website has been up for several years. Everything I do in terms of marketing, I push to my website. I'm not gonna push that to Etsy. There are a lot of other sellers on there and people are not going to necessarily recognize that it's my shop and my brand they're gonna they're going to refer to it as etsy so everything goes over to my website my facebook group is um i probably should have mentioned that but i'll i'll mention it um in conjunction with my website i also have another revenue stream which is my facebook group so the facebook group has a sale once a month but everything is run through my website there so it's really important to establish your own brand and your own presence on the internet with your own website and as many customers as you can funnel to that website, um, that's going to be better for your business in the long run. Now, in conjunction with the website, I also sell on Etsy. But what I have done is I have a very different product on Etsy. I sell gift boxes to people, whereas on my website, you'll see a seasonal gift box offered or a holiday gift box offered. But my website really functions to have my individual products for anyone who has purchased a gift site or a gift box. They're going to probably come back and um, get some additional items as they run out and mostly they get those from my website because I've placed a card in all of my orders and they know where to find me instead of trying to relocate me on Etsy. Um, also, customers who purchase the gift boxes on Etsy are oftentimes purchasing those for someone else. They send them to that that someone and then I gain a new customer because those customers will reach out to me. Oftentimes they find me, sometimes on Etsy, but I would say about 90% of the time they find me on my website and I get a message saying, I got this wonderful cream, what's the name of it? Uh, it's I can't remember and I this is what it smells like, I really need to reorder it. So the website's really important. That's also where I keep my blog and I can just also interact with my customers more online. Finally, Etsy has become a place where I can sell gift boxes. So my gift boxes on Etsy are finally becoming very successful and I have another video sharing what has worked with for me this year that I have just figured out really in the last six or seven months how to make Etsy work for me because for a while it wasn't, it wasn't working at all. I, I was not getting sales and it wasn't because of my pictures or my branding or anything like that. It was some key components that I was missing. So on Etsy, I will always keep that Etsy shop up because I have a different customer base on Etsy than I do on my website. So why wouldn't I take advantage of the throngs of people who come to Etsy to shop, especially for gifts, um, for me anyway, and keep that presence known? those Etsy customers often become customers on my website. So all of these five actually additional, right? I think I threw um, a couple of other things in there too, including my Facebook group. These are the five ways I bring money into my business. There are custom orders and things like that that take place, but I'm kind of looping all of those into the website. Um, 
If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer. If you have anything really detailed, um, please see the link in Etsy where I'm happy to chat with you and share some more details about how I do these things, particularly the consignment. I've really um, worked out a way that consignment can be very successful and has been very successful for me. Okay, so thanks for watching.